What the hell did I just watch? What is up? Good mic work back at you. I am screw job level shocked right now. What the fuck is going on here? What did we just witness at Survivor Series? This thing was not really pleasing me up until the end. I think the shock value alone makes me, I guess, somewhat satisfied with it because I just cannot believe what we saw. Now, I know this has exploded the internet. This has torn the entire wrestling world apart. There's going to be people debating shit about this match. You know, like the length of it and why did they build Brock for three years and have him end the streak only to have him lose in 35 seconds to Bill Goldberg? I don't know the answers to those questions yet. The only thing I can think of in my head is maybe Goldberg is leaving, or I'm sorry, maybe Brock is leaving or something like that. You know, he's had a rocky road since the big UFC fight and the drug tests and all of that. But maybe they're deciding to part ways. I mean, what other explanation can we have for the outcome of a match that I don't think anybody on this planet saw coming? I didn't see, number one, Goldberg winning at all, much less destroying Brock Lesnar. He destroyed Brock Lesnar ten times worse than Brock Lesnar de destroyed John Cena at SummerSlam 2014. That is insane. And I guess, you know, I'll address maybe some of the arguments. Uh, the people that are saying, oh, this is horseshit, look at what they've done with Brock. He ended the Undertaker streak. He's ran over everybody in the WWE. You would think if he's eventually going to lose clean, it should be to somebody that's going to be on the roster for years to come, somebody that they can use that victory to help launch, not some guy that hasn't been in the ring in 12 years. I completely and totally understand, and I agree with you. I think where I'm not freaking out as bad is that I'm just so shocked. I mean, maybe the shock is going to wear off and turn into anger, but we're just minutes after this pay-per-view. This thing literally just ended, and I'm just giving you my initial reaction. I don't even know what's going to come out on the internet reports or the dirt sheets late tonight or tomorrow morning as to what the reasoning might have been for the finish that they did. I mean, what the fuck, man? I mean, it was an epic confrontation, a big entrance. Goldberg looked exactly the way he did 12 years ago. He hasn't changed at all. They get in the ring. They face off. Goldberg catches Brock with a quick spear, a real good one. And then he catches him with another one and then picks him up and jackhammers him and pins him. And the entire audience reacted much in the same way that they did at WrestleMania 30 when the Undertaker streak was broken. We could not believe that. So for the shock factor alone... I'm going to give this match a pass for now. I reserve the right to change my opinion tomorrow after I sleep on this a little bit. But, you know, I was not expecting much out of the Survivor Series. I was not enjoying the show really up until that point. And then when we had that match, it was like, holy shit, the Internet exploded. So I like when things surprise us. I like when things explode the Internet and get people talking. And I like when things are controversial. And this definitely was. So your guess is as good as mine as to why in the hell they went with this type of finish and what this means for the future. Is Brock Lesnar going to come back and avenge this? You know, you got to think of when Goldberg came back and signed his contract. He's not going to come back and sign with the WWE just to get his ass beat. So certainly there's got to be something worked out where, okay, if you come back, we will make sure you win a match or two uh, while you're here. And uh, definitely a big one. So if he's going to face Brock, maybe the condition was that he has to win. And say, okay, Goldberg, you're going to win the first one, and you're going to win the first one big. But then Brock will win the blow-off. You know, there was a very good chance, had this match gone 20 minutes like everybody wanted, there was a very good chance that this match might suck. You know, I was worried because the crowd had already been dead a couple of times previously in the show. And if these two guys would have worked that slow, methodical process, I think the fans might have started chanting, this is boring. Don't forget what got Goldberg over in the first place. Quick fast, hard-hitting matches. You know, he was in and out of the ring in a shorter time than his entire entrance took. That's what got him on the map to begin with. So them staying true to that, I really can't complain. But for the type of beast that Brock is, it's very hard to believe, you know, and suspend your disbelief that a guy who hasn't been in the ring and competed in active competition in over 12 years, who was pushing 50 years old, and who was not even in his prime anywhere near the caliber of athlete that Brock Lesnar was, how can he go out there and beat Brock that convincingly. There has got to be more than this than meets the eye, and I'm really curious to see what all the reports are going to say tomorrow about what the fuck we witnessed. Will we see Brock Lesnar on Raw? Will we see Goldberg on Raw? Is Brock Lesnar gone for good? What the fuck is going on here? So uh, I'm just as freaked out as you guys are, and I'm not ready to start worrying about whether the decision to do this was right or wrong. I know there's going to be people on each side of that debate. I really don't care. Uh, either way. Um, I, I definitely think it was fucked up. I definitely wish that whoever beat Brock 
would have been somebody like a Kevin Owens or a Samoa Joe or a Seth Rollins or somebody like that. You know what I mean? Uh, not Goldberg. And if Goldberg did win, I still wouldn't have cared if they would have done some shenanigans. But for the way he destroyed and smashed Brock Lesnar, I don't think I've been any more shocked in my life at the outcome of a WWE pay-per-view than I was in this one. Holy shit. Leave me your thoughts about it. I'm sure you guys are already doing that, typing away down below in the comments. Let me know what you think, what your angers are, what, what you liked about it, disliked about it, the problems you see with it, where you think they are going to go moving forward with this, if there's any backstage stuff we don't know about. I mean, for Brock to get beat this significantly, it really makes me think that he might be on his way out the door. Uh, I'm just... Uh, I'm going to state a shock right now. I got to be honest. Why don't we talk about the rest of this card and then I'll get out of here. I will give a much more detailed opinion of Survivor Series uh, either tomorrow night after Raw or Tuesday night after SmackDown. And I'll review both shows and the fallout of Survivor Series and what we have learned about this whole situation with Brock Lesnar and Bill Goldberg. Um, but as far as the rest of the show goes, I was pretty disappointed up until this point. I was not a, a big fan of the match outcomes. And you guys know me. I normally don't even complain about match outcomes. They usually don't bother me that bad, but I was fucking pissed tonight. Some of the stuff just didn't make any sense. Uh, why don't we just backtrack all the way back to the beginning of the card? They started with the women's match, which I liked. I thought it was a good match to open with. And I had predicted that SmackDown would win this because, you know, their women's division has a new belt. You know, Charlotte and Sasha have been killing it on Monday Night Raw. To me, I thought it would be benef more beneficial for SmackDown to win than Raw. But I was wrong about that. I was wrong about a lot of things tonight. Raw wound up winning. Charlotte and Bailey were the two survivors in that match. And then after the match, of course, Charlotte turns back into the bitch that we all knew she was and attacked Bailey. Uh, the interesting part of this match, however, is Nikki Bella didn't even compete in it. Here I was predicting that Nikki Bella was going to pin and eliminate Charlotte, and she didn't even compete in the match. She was attacked backstage. Daniel Bryan and a referee found her, and Natalia happened to be lurking around. And she was like, Daniel, I know there's no other choice. I know I'm just the coach, but I think I need to go in there and help out SmackDown. And Daniel Bryan's like, yeah, I guess we have no choice. Go out there and, and get in there. So I guess that's uh, it's obvious that Natalia was the one that attacked Nikki, and I guess that'll lead to a feud between the two. But I was surprised that they wrote Nikki Bella completely off the show, which makes me think that maybe she's injured or something like that. Otherwise, why would they leave her off of Survivor Series completely? You know, she's got stroke. This is John Cena's girlfriend. She's going to be left off a major pay-per-view. Uh, just to further an angle, it seemed silly. They could have furthered an angle between Natalia and Nikki Bella a lot of different ways than, than doing that. So anyway, uh, hopefully Nikki is okay, and uh, we'll have to read the reports on her tomorrow as well. We then got the Intercontinental title match, which did end the way I wanted. The Miz did retain, keeping the Intercontinental title on SmackDown. I thought it would have been silly to move it over to Raw. Maurice, of course, was the big reason why he retained. She rang the bell when Sami Zayn had the Miz locked in a figure four, and right before he was about to give up, the Miz, or I'm sorry, the Maurice rings the bell, causing the distraction, and the Miz is able to pin Sami Zayn with a roll-up. And uh, Maurice, basically, she's the Intercontinental Champion in my book. She helps him win every single match. And I'm fine with it because I like the Miz and Maurice combination. I've talked about them before. I like him as Intercontinental Champion, and I want the IC belt to stay on SmackDown. So I guess in the end, I'm very happy with the outcome. That was probably the only outcome I was happy with. Then we had the big 20-man tag. Now this match, along with the Intercontinental title match, I actually did predict right. Raw wound up winning this. Uh, but in another shock, another quick finish, the New Day was eliminated like right off the bat. To us, that was the big shock of the night before we saw what happened to Brock. But uh, Brazango was actually eliminated first, like in under a minute. Bushwhacker Luke Royal Rumble category there. And then right after that, the New Day gets eliminated, which was a big shock, which I actually liked. And in the end, we had Raw winning. Cesaro and Sheamus were the sole survivors. And uh, Cesaro, I think, tapped out one of the Usos to the sharpshooter, which was great. I mean, we're next year is the 20-year anniversary of the screw job, if you can believe that. I was really hoping they would put Survivor Series next year in Montreal, but they made an announcement on the show tonight that it will be in Houston. So that's kind of a bummer. But uh, it's always nice to see a sharpshooter win a match at a Survivor Series. So congrats to Raw there. And I think in the match that annoyed me the most, Brian Kendrick retained the Cruiserweight Championship. Now, don't get me wrong. I love Brian Kendrick. I'm a much bigger supporter of his than the rest of the audience seems to be. Uh, they are dead as shit during a lot of the Cruiserweight stuff lately. They were dead again here tonight for this match against Kalisto in Toronto. Uh, but I just hated the outcome of it because I don't understand why the Cruiserweight title is going to stay on Raw. To me, that makes no sense. Now, Kendrick, by the way, he retained because Baron Corbin showed up and got Kalisto DQ'd. 
And I was like, son of a bitch, you've got to be kidding me. I mean, at least if you're going to have Kendrick keep the belt, at least have him win. That one spot he did where he yanked Kalisto off the top rope right into the captain's hook, that should have been the finish right there. Have Kalisto tap out. Fuck. I thought Kalisto was going to win. I thought the Cruiserweight title was going to go over to SmackDown. To me, that made the most sense. Why is a Raw brand title going to have its own show immediately following SmackDown with a SmackDown announcer? I had read somewhere, am I right about this, Mauro Ranallo and Corey Graves are going to be the announcers for 205 Live. So you've got a Raw guy and a SmackDown guy. It should be brand exclusive. And I think what they're doing with the Cruiserweight division makes absolutely no sense. And finally, the five-on-five big main event Raw versus SmackDown match came right before the Brock Lesnar-Bill Goldberg match. This turned out to be okay. SmackDown did wind up winning, which I predicted wrong. I think I had Raw winning this match. A couple of major things happened in this match, mainly Shane McMahon getting knocked the fuck out. First of all, the motherfucker already dives off the top rope onto the announce table on the outside of the ring. Then later on in the match, he decides he wants to go for his big Van Daminator, Van Terminator, whatever the hell it is, on Roman Reigns. This is a move that he's still trying to do. And in a finish that I think would have been awesome, he goes for it and Reigns gets up and nails him with a spear. The problem is he it was almost a botch. It looked like Reigns' shoulder caught Shane right in the face and then the back of his head just bounced right off the mat like a fucking basketball and Shane's eyes just were glazed over and wide open and he was knocked I think legit unconscious I think Roman was supposed to pin him there but the referee just stopped it altogether and Shane got eliminated and it was a really scary moment I'm curious what the reports are on Shane hopefully he's not hurt too badly definitely at least a concussion there and given Shane's age and the fact that he's not really a wrestler he has got to stop taking chances like this that table bump was all they needed to do You know, he almost killed himself at WrestleMania 33. I don't know why he thinks he must do these type of moves for the fans to appreciate him. The fans respect Shane regardless. And if he insists on taking a bump, fine. But don't take two ridiculous bumps or very high-risk bumps because eventually it's going to come back and bite you in the ass, and it did. And I really hope that Shane's all right because that was scary as hell. Some of the other highlights saw Braun Strowman getting eliminated by James Ellsworth. He's going nuts out there, beating the hell out of everybody. Very impressive. He's on the outside of the ring, and he's trying to get in before the referee counts to 10, and James Ellsworth, who is under the ring, grabs onto his leg and gets him countered out. So I was happy with that because in the women's match, we saw Nia Jax tapping out, which I didn't like, and I was really hoping that they didn't do that with Braun Strowman if he was going to get eliminated. I had mentioned in previous commentaries, if he's going to get eliminated, just have him get countered out or brawl out into the crowd or get DQ'd or something. Just don't pin him or make him submit in that ring. I think that would be a big mistake. So I was fine with the way they got Strowman out of there, and he absolutely murdered Ellsworth for doing that as well. Yanked him right out from underneath the ring, carried him up the ramp, and just tossed him right off through a table. So Ellsworth got what he deserved. Braun Strowman got eliminated, yet still left Survivor Series looking like a monster. And uh, in my mind, that's mission accomplished. The best part was the Shield reunion. Four years after they debuted at Survivor Series 2012, they got back together. Dean Ambrose, who was eliminated by Strowman earlier on in the match, He showed back up to attack AJ and basically fuck over SmackDown. He attacks AJ while the match is still going on. Roman and Seth are still in the match, and the three of them get together and give AJ the big shield powerbomb. And I forgot how AJ officially got eliminated. Was he pinned, or did they just count him out after the powerbomb? I can't even remember. My mind feels like scrambled eggs right now after what we witnessed with Brock and Goldberg. Um, But Seth Rollins wound up eating an RKO, and he got eliminated, leaving Randy Orton and Bray Wyatt to face Roman Reigns. I was really hoping that Roman wouldn't have the big comeback and actually win this fucking thing, but he didn't. Randy Orton even sacrificed him for Bray Wyatt, eating a spear, allowing Bray to nail Roman with Sister Abigail and get the pin, and Bray Wyatt and Randy Orton are your two survivors. And uh, Luke Harper made an appearance in this match as well. He had a uh, kickoff match with Kane, which he lost, actually. Uh, But he appeared literally out of nowhere. The lights didn't even go out. Suddenly, he was just at ringside. So that kind of spooked me a little bit. And in the end, I was actually happy with the outcome. There were some really good spots in the match. The fans seemed into it. But as far as Randy Orton and Bray Wyatt being the survivors, no complaints here. uh, Whenever Bray Wyatt gets his hand raised at any major WWE pay-per-view, I'm a happy guy. So I have no issue there. I was happy to be wrong, and I'm glad that SmackDown won. I'll talk more about this either tomorrow night after Raw. I'm not sure if I'll be able to get up here and do a review yet or not. If I'm not able to, I will come up on Wednesday or late Wednesday like I usually do and review both Raw and SmackDown, and we will discuss everything uh, as it pertains to Survivor Series. Real quick, I'll mention NXT TakeOver as well. I was lucky enough to be home to watch that on Saturday night, and that was an awesome show. Really surprised at the main event there, too. I did not predict 
that Samoa Joe would win back the belt, but he did. He beat Nakamura in a pretty damn good match. A lot of fans were shocked and mad. I really wasn't mad. I enjoy NXT, and I have no real issue with it. Definitely was shocked by it because Nakamura kind of just won it recently, and I didn't see them putting the belt back on Joe, but the fact that they did doesn't really bother me. But I think the show overall was probably better than Survivor Series. It opened with a great Bobby Roode versus Ty Dillinger match. And that crowd, they brought in the choir to do Bobby Roode's entrance, which was fucking epic. I can envision them doing that at WrestleMania one day. And that was so awesome. Such a perfect match to open with. And it was a good match. And the crowd gave Ty Dillinger a standing ovation in the loss after the match, which I thought was really cool, too. We did see the Authors of Pain win the Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic. We did see a tag team title change, which I predicted. Ciampa and Gargano did defeat the Revival in a two out of three falls match, which was awesome. That could have been match of the night. It can be on the list for match of the year. I'm not saying it was, but if you're listing, you know, candidates for match of the year, and let's say we're allowed 10, I think that match could be on there. That was awesome. That was easily my favorite match of the night was that tag team bout between those four guys. Amazing stuff. Can't say enough good things about it. Mickey James put on a pretty good effort against Asuka as well. Asuka gave her a lot and sold well for her and made, made Mickey look like a million bucks. In the end, we did see Asuka retaining, which is what I was hoping they would do. I am a huge Asuka fan. She is, you know, she's the female version of Brock Lesnar for me. I absolutely love her. Hopefully she will not get squashed one day. Uh, in 55 seconds by Trish Stratus in 12 years or something like that. But uh, Asuka's still on a roll. Love her, love her, love her. Great to see Mickey James back. And the two girls put on one hell of a match. Overall, I have to say Survivor Series weekend was pretty fun. You know, TakeOver was fantastic, and Survivor Series was shocking as hell. And Twitter is a buzz, and I'm sure a lot of YouTubers that talk about wrestling are going to be all over that channel tonight talking about what the hell we saw, and you guys are going to get all sorts of different opinions all over the place on the internet after this Survivor Series. It was truly a shocking, shocking show. So that is it for me. I am out of here. Like I said, I'll be up here either tomorrow or in a day or two to talk about everything else. Leave me all your thoughts on Survivor Series, how mad you are, how not mad you are, and uh, any other information you want to give me, just fire away and let me have it. I will talk to you all very soon. Have a great rest of your night. Until next time, peace.